All right, with the music transition, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so up, up next, we have how to deploy on Friday night. Sounds like a nightmare topic with <laughs> to most of us. With Thomas, go ahead and take it away. Yes, so um, hello, my name is Thomas. Um, and welcome to my talk about how we can deploy something on Friday night. So um, I'm working in IT for 25 years. I like to install things, I like to deploy things, and I always had the problem that, some, that every time I updated something, something broke. Therefore, in the last few years, I did a lot of work in, in infrastructure automation and also work in the Captain project. Um, furthermore, I'm, I'm tech lead of the CNCF tech app delivery, I'm CD, CNCF and CDF ambassador, and if the time is, um, and if I have enough time, I'm also teaching at the University of Allied Sciences, Sciences about um, cloud native things. So, what will you hear in the next few hours? I think um, I think this should be enough. Um, we, um, I will talk about what we, as a Captain Project, learned in, uh, from from the last KubeCon. Um, furthermore, I will also talk a bit why why we all think that GitOps is cool, but which things um, makes it a bit challenging. Furthermore, how you can measure your deployment strategy. And um, yes, um, we always want to know if our application is, is really working. And in the end, uh, in the end, we will um, catch up. And um, I will talk about anything which wasn't in the to in the talk. So um, yes, last year we was we were at KubeCon at Valencia. We had a lot of traffic on our on our booth. And um, what we found out there is. Currently, obviously, GitOps is the dominant approach to deliver cloud-native applications. Okay, so far so good. Furthermore, um, any, everyone likes continuous um, reconciliation in GitOps, so we all like that we can um, put something in a Git repository, um, and we have a GitOps controller which takes care of um, applying this on our cluster. Furthermore, um, we learned that people would like to get more control in the GitOps processes. So normally, um, you, put, uh, you put something in, the, in your GitOps repository, and the GitOps controller applies it. That's his job, and um, that's what he does. And uh, last thing we learned was that release promotion in GitOps is a major topic. So um, no one wants to... Um, uh, wants to change manifests manually in the Git repository. Anyone wants to um, automatically do this. And many people are struggling with this. So currently I'm also um, supervising a master thesis about this. Um, I think you can write book, book, books about um, promoting, promoting in GitOps. So um, after, after the KubeCon, we um, put, put our heads together and thought how we could make this better in GitOps, uh, how we could make GitOps better. And therefore, um, we started playing around with a new project called the Capital Lifecycle Controller. But at first, let's talk about GitOps and its challenges. So, um, when we are talking about GitOps, we are, we are mainly having a GitOps controller, like Argo, Flux, or whatever. This GitOps controller takes a desired state, which is normally um, stored in a Git repository. This can also be stored somewhere else. Um, and it applies this on a Kubernetes cluster. What we like about this, we have a declarative desired state. So we have our manifest somewhere. We have this stored in a Git repository. And um, yes, um, we, um, and this is versioned and so on. This is continuously reconciled, as, as I discussed uh, before. And if the desired state drifts from the Kubernetes cluster, we are aware of that. And the GitOps controller takes care of that if we, um, if we allow him to. What we don't like about this is um, we are always struggling with application and microservice deployment. So um, normally in a cloud native world, we are always assuming that we have uh, microservices, we have independently tested components, and uh, um, everything is loosely, loosely coupled. Um, but in reality, this looks a bit different. So we have large applications, we have um, a few services which are tested together, and we want to deploy them together. Um, we are also struggling with scheduled deployments. As I said before, um, 
uh, GitOps controller does what we, what we tell him. So if a manifest is in the Git repository, he applies it. There is no room for scheduling or whatever. Um, yes, GitOps integration in pipelines is also a very, very funny topic. Um, think about your, um, your, your integration pipeline ends in the Git repository and what happens now. So you don't have, um, you cannot do some promotion afterwards because you always have to do some correlation between the Git repository, uh, be between the information in Git, the GitOps controller and your CI pipeline. And um, yes, resulting from this, promotion is also a hot topic. So um, the first thing I want to discuss here is when is my infrastructure really ready? So when we, when we are deploying something, we want to ensure if our infrastructure is ready, right? So um, the first thing, do I really want to, to allow deployments at this point in time? So is there some bug fixing in progress? Is there something I'm working on on the cluster before I want to deploy new software on it? Furthermore, are all dependencies fulfilled? So if I deploy an application and this application needs a database or needs a message queuing service and so on from a cloud provider, is this really available before I deploy my application? And one of the third things, are infrastructure changes in progress? So is my Terraform script currently running? Um, is, um, is there already some, something happening in my cluster? And a second thing, um, what if I want to deploy a, a specific set of services? So what I said before, um, we are not living in a, purely, uh, in a pure microservices world. We might also have problems that we have um, service one, two, three in different versions. And these three together um, are combined into one, one, uh, one application. Good. And this is the first thing I want to show you today. What we can do, uh, what our Captain Lifecycle Toolkit can do to, um, to help you there. At first, we will apply some Kubernetes manifests. We will check for infrastructure readiness. Therefore, I created a, a small service which um, simulates this. This is the readiness service. Um, at some point in time, I will disable the maintenance. Then we will deploy the front end. Um, furthermore, we will check on the, on the other services. So our application consists of six, six services. If the front end is ready, and after this is, is done, then we deploy the back end services. And, the end, and in the end, um, we'll see that everything works, hopefully. Okay. So to our demo application, um, I have a really dumb Kubernetes manifest. So this is the app manifest, sorry. And my screen is very small today. Um, so for the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit, we're taking um, Kubernetes primitives. So we are doing everything. Uh, you, you can do everything as you did before. The only thing you might want to do is to annotate some things. And um, therefore, we are taking the recommended Kubernetes labels. So for the detection of an application, workload, and so on, we can take um, the app Kubernetes IO um, recommended labels. And for the things which are not more or less standardized, we have created our own labels, such as Captain SH pre-deployment tasks. Um, and we want to check if the front-end service is there before we are deploying other, th other things. Uh, and this is uh, things we can do on every workload, such as deployments, work, um, stateful sets, daemon sets, and so. Um, a second thing what we can do to build some kind of application is we can specify such an application. Therefore, we invented an yet another application um, definition. This is called the Captain App. And we specified that this is the application in the version 0.1.1. And this consists of the workloads, uh, potato head left arm, left leg, front end, and so on in these versions. And with this, the lifecycle toolkit knows when the application is fin when the application deployment has finished and can take actions after that. Um, 
and I talked about um, tasks in the in the last few few minutes. Therefore, we can also take uh, we can also define some such pre such pre deployment tasks in various ways or pre or post deployment tasks. So this is a typical ta captain task definition. Um, we can take a TypeScript function which is stored in a Git repository at, um, currently. Um, we can pass parameters to it, and this can be executed when it's so far. Okay, and for this um, for this demo, we create um, we are simply running a pre-deployment infrastructure task. This is also um, simply running a, a TypeScript function. This TypeScript function looks like this, and so it will get pretty in the future, but um, we get. Um, but it, I think it's not so hard to to write. The only thing we do is we we, we fetch the URL um, we passed over via the parameters. But that's enough code. Let's do something. So. Good morning. Okay. So then. Um, So this is the Kubernetes cluster where I'm, where I'm working on at the moment. And what we see here, um, we are deploying a lot of services here. And the first thing we see is that all of our services are pending now. Or, or all of our workloads are pending now. So they are not scheduled at the moment. Um, furthermore, we see that our application pre-deployment task has started. And if we take a closer look on it, um, we see that the infrastructure is not ready. Okay, so um, this is my simple infrastructure service. So the only thing I did here was I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm returning a not ready um, when the service queries it. And let's say I want to disable this maintenance now. Okay. Sorry, everything is so small here. <laughs> My port forward broke. Now it's better. Okay, so my infrastructure is uh, in a perfect state now again. And when I get back here, I see that my pre-deployment task has completed now, so the infrastructure is ready now. Um, in a few seconds, hopefully. Um, yes, the pre-deployment tasks for the other services should, should start. So we see that the front-end service, so the front-end service should start in a few, in a few. Um, good morning. Yes, so the, the front-end service is starting now. And all of the other service, uh, all of the other workloads are, wor are, are waiting now until this service is ready. So you see, the, pod, the, the one container is not ready at the moment. Therefore, they are still waiting. And yes, on the other side, there are um, there's, there are other pre-deployment tasks running which cannot fetch the URL at the moment. So now my pre-deployment task has also fin My screen is gone. Um, so um, we see that, that, that all of the other services are, are starting now. Um, this takes a bit because of, of some, some, some scheduling things. And in a few seconds, also the last, the last one should be there. Yes, and now all of the services are there. And you can always um, inspect uh, the state of your application in a cap Captain Application version object, which say, says that the application potato head in the version 011 is now completely deployed. Perfect. Good. This was the first one. Um, 
Okay, so um, now we can deploy an application, we can check for prerequisites, but another thing we always want to know is how successful our deployment strategy really is. So um, at some point in time we started um, we started working on our platform, we started working on our deployment processes, and the most important things for us technician, technicians is um, we are always following a business purpose. So um, we are do, doing cool stuff. Um, we can create very perfect um, deployment strategies, um, but in the end it's all about selling um, services, things, or whatever. So, um, at first, um, a, a thing we always should have in mind is getting measurable results of our changes in the, um, in the deployment strategy is instrumental for selling our things. So, when we are working hours, weeks, months on our deployment um, strategy and on our platforms, um, in the end, everyone will, get some, will want to get some value out of it. Therefore, we should try to find out how fast we can deploy now, how often we can deploy now, and how happy our customers are in the end. So, and in the end, all of this helps us taking the next steps and um, selling our deployment, our strategy. So, when, for, in, um, yes, for instance, when we have many unsuccessful deployments, we might want to improve testing before, our, before we deploy something. So, um, also in our CI processes. Um, when we have a high velocity, velocity in bundled deployments and we can deploy each hour and so on, um, we could consider decoupling and deploy services independently to get a, a, bit, faster, a bit faster again and um, a bit more, more independent. And um, if we have low velocity and many errors, it could be that low velocity, velocity is the problem. So when we are thinking of traditional systems, um, we, I think we deployed once, once and a half year. Um, and yes, systems broke, but that's clear. Um, because um, if we deploy with many, with many changes and we don't know what, what changed when we deploy something, it's... Um, it can get hard to update. Um, furthermore, it can also get hard to um, hard to find problems afterwards. So, and this brings me to the second demo. And this was kind of a spoiler. So, I will simply deploy a second version of this of the application. And they are not, um, it, it didn't really change much in the, in the manifest, so only versions changed. The only thing we see here is that we deploy uh, version one, uh, zero one two there. And I think my portfolio broke also there. And let's stick this one. Okay, and then we have some really nice dashboards here. So at first, um, we get some metrics. So you see, my deployment is really, really good. No, nothing failed until in the last few, in the last few hours. Um, but six deployments succeeded. One is currently in progress. So this is the one I started before. Um, and sometimes we need a, we need a higher time frame. Um, and we can also get some metrics out of there, so out of this, so we can find out how long the version one zero zero um, was in, was um, uh, there on average. Um, we also see how long um, it took fr to transition from zero one two to zero one three. We see how long the average time between the two deployments was, um, and we see how long our versions took in average to to deploy, and. For some people, it might also get interesting when we had application deployments. And this is always referring to the whole application, not to a workload. And another thing we, uh, we might want to have if we, um, if we engineer our deployment process. 
Sorry, everything is really small here. Yeah. Um, um, we can inspect all of the things we've done with our application deployment in a trace. So we see that the whole, um, we see how long the, the, the whole application deployment took us. Um, so in this case, it was very long. Um, we see how long our pre-deployment tasks took and which our pre what our pre-deployment tasks were. So for instance, we waited five seconds until our infrastructure check was ready. Um, we see how long all of our workloads took to deploy afterwards. So here. And you also see um, this for each, for each service. And you see the pre-deployment, pre deployment, and post-deployment tasks for each service, or each workload. So I think with this we can uh, we can do a lot of funny things and can um, it's it's easier to find out what's really going on. In the end, we can all um, we can also take a look at each at each thing. Uh, we get some events back, but at some um, yes, we also see we only see that it's finished and so on. But we can also pass over more information. Um, all of the things you're you are seeing here are based on open source software. So this is all done with open telemetry. In this case, it's Jaeger and Prometheus in the back end. Um, it's really easy to create other providers. Um, currently, there are providers for Dynatrace and Datadog. And with uh, all of this telemetry data can also, can also be used for other things. So <clears throat> yes, you, um, you, you can dashboard it whatever, wherever you want. Okay. So we get to the third part. Is my application really working? So um, we see that all of our pods are running. Sounds really, sounds really promising. We also see that all of our services are there. It's also a very, very cool thing. Um, but this is what the customer sees. So it can be that all of our pods are, per are running perfectly fine, our health checks are all okay, um, and everything is fine. But in the end, our application is not really working. So what can go wrong, and what, what has gone wrong here? Um, we could have performance problems in the application. So um, we have to deploy everything. Um, technically, everything is fine, but our customer surfs on the website and it takes him about a minute to load. Therefore, I think this is not accept acceptable for the customer, and therefore we have to do something. Um, secondly, we could, be, um, fun we could have functional problems. So we could have missing components in the application, such as a database, and this is not reflected in health checks and so on. Which brings me to the third, third thing. Um, many health checks also only pass back status OK. So they, didn't, they don't check if the backend services are there, um, if the application is really running, and so on. And um, last but not least, um, yes, health checks um, are working on based on individual, in, on individual services. So it can be that we have a, an application with 20 services. Every service is fine on its own, but the communication between all of them is poor. Okay, so um, how can we know that our application is working? So we have in our lifecycle toolkit three phases. The first is the pre-deployment phase. This was the one we saw in the first demo. Um, we can do some, such things as preparing, preparing our infrastructure, um, checking infrastructure things, um, but we could also evaluate metrics. So this is also a core, core functionality which we will not demo today. We can always evaluate metri metrics there. The second thing is we are deploying workloads. Perfect, this is also a thing we did today. The third thing we will see afterwards, we can do post-deployment tasks, such as running tests, doing notifications, um, and evaluating metrics. But um, we can also do this for each and every workload. So each and every workload has a pre-deployment uh, phase, a, a, a deployment phase, and a post-deployment phase. So 
what we did before was we checked if our infrastructure is ready on an application level. We also checked for some services if the infrastructure was ready on a workload level. We, we also checked if another service was there on a workload level, deployed this workload, um, did no post deployment in our case, and then um, this is the last, last thing we use, you will see today. We can't use some post deployment things on the application base, and this was the reason why our application um, why our application object is so important, because given the things we have in the application um, object, we find out when all of the workloads are deployed. Okay, and this is the last demo I will show you. So um, we will simply apply a manifest. We will have a new service. This will also check for, for readiness. This will uh, query the readiness service. We will deploy the new service. We will check for problems using uh, Kate's GPT. So this is a, an open source project to check if Kubernetes deployments are running, um, and send the results to the readiness service and give this out. Hopefully this, this will go really fast. So I deployed a third version. I added a new, uh, new post deployment task in the app manifest. Um, You can also see here in the in the captain app, in the captain app, app version object what's happening. Um, so we see that pre-deployment evaluations are running. We we see now that the app, app deployment is running. This should also go go very fast. We see that the new service is pending. Now the post deployment task should be should should come up shortly. Hours later, so this is running and completed. So we see that Kate's GPT has been triggered, and in the end, I said I want I want to notify some some service, and this was what I did here. And I see I have a new event. I have a new event there. So this this was only a simple service I created. Um, and if I mouse over, and this is a thing you don't see, is that Kate's GPT found no problems. Perfect. Um, okay. To wrap this up, how can we deploy it Friday night? Um, we should know our application and get insights. So. Every time we build an application, we should try to find out what can we check before we want to deploy it, what do we have to prepare, and what can we evaluate. Um, we can make improvement based on telemetry data. So if we find out that something takes too long, we can find out which workload was it and, and so on. We can check our readiness before deployment. So we checked if the infrastructure was ready, and after that we deployed it. And we can run validation steps after deployment, as we saw here with case GPT. Okay, um, so uh, what would be really cool? Um, it would be really cool if you would also contribute. So uh, we have a lot of captain enhancement proposals. Uh, we have a lot, lot of cool people, a uh, co lot of cool features in the pipeline. Um, but it would everything would go faster if we were more. Furthermore, um, you can write simple, simple Captain Lifecycle Toolkit tasks. So everything I did with the Kate's, in, uh, Kate's GPT integration, with um, sending HTTP requests and so on, these were things I did in the last two days. So um, I think everyone is able to write, to write at least some, some, some TypeScript function. And if you are doing much, um, if you are contributing very much, you can get a rock star. So um, we, we are also... Um, we have Captain Community Rockstars. These two uh, pretty, uh, we are really good contributors. One of them is also a TC member now. And 
we are a really nice community, so just feel free to come to the community meetings and so on. Um, you can um, get in touch with us. Um, link, um, link and stars on our repository. So I think we are about 30 people now. Um, I hope I have 30 stars more in the next, in the next one hour. Um, you can also sh always share, or share your thoughts. Um, you can ping us on the CNCF Slack, and um, you can always um, raise PRs, um, meet us on Slack, and so on. Okay, this was it from my side. Um, I think this was on point. <laughs> I mean, we, we, and so this is the last talk before lunch, so questions are welcome. You're just eating into your own lunch time, so otherwise, uh, we can give a hand for Thomas and then maybe take some questions. Thank you. Anybody? Anybody? And you can uh, you can meet me and other captain people on the scene, on the booth on the at KubeCon. Very good. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. <laughs>